Hello, good morning. This is a case of laparoscopic ovarian cystectomy with the myomectomy. This patient has one uh, 6 cm diameter dermoid cyst and together with the two big myomas, but both the myomas are subserous. One subserous myoma you can see just in front, it is approximately 4.5 cm and one other is the posterior wall of the uterus, that is intramural and uh, this patient has the infertility also, so we will do the tubal potency test as well. This is the ovarian cyst and this is a quite large dermoid ovarian cyst but it is on the outer surface of the ovary so that is easy to remove here this is a sub serous myoma that is approximately 4 cm in the largest diameter and there is one myoma which is intramural that is present in the posterior wall so this is just we are doing the ovarian cystectomy and to separate the outer serous layer from the inner ovarian cortex and slowly it can be separated with the harmonic our aim is that the ovary should not get ruptured during the ovarian cystectomy and that we are getting a plane the tube, this is the tube we can see, this is just like a para ovarian cyst and the tube fimbrial end can be seen which is attached near to the ovarian cyst so care should be taken that that fimbria of the tube should not be damaged here the left hand has the atraumatic grasper and right hand has the harmonic scalpel through which the dissection is carried out. If ipsilateral port position is used, although one contralateral port also latter we will introduce for the myoma screw during the laparoscopic myomectomy. So slowly the dissection is carried out and the outer peritoneal surface of the ovarian cyst is opened. During dissection, the silicon jaw of the harmonic should be kept towards the cyst, otherwise the street jaw, if vibrates and touch the cyst, cyst can be ruptured. Although the rupturing of the cyst during the ovarian cystectomy is quite common and if you will do copious lavage, if you can suck it, there is no any complication. Even if it is dermoid cyst, Sometimes the chances of chemical peritonitis is there, but that can be easily controlled by the repeated laparoscopy, copious lavage, and then thorough cleaning of all the quadrant. Now we are at near the fimbrial end of the tube on the left side, and slowly harmonic is dissecting the cyst on the right to that, taking care of that the collateral damage should not reach up to the fimbrial end of the tube. This is the fimbrial end and slowly cyst is separated. Here our main importance is that it should not rupture. Rupturing of the cyst cavity should be avoided. Dissection should be gentle, excessive stretch can tear the tube and major salpings and bleeding can start. And in the to control the bleeding, if you use the monopolar or bipolar, then remote injury and collateral damage can shrink and it can create the problem with the tube.
so now this cyst is completely separated just little attachment with the fimbria that you will also carefully separated from the cyst during the laparoscopic ovarian cystectomy the purpose of the harmonic is just to give a plane of tissue dissection and not to directly damage the tube or the mesosalpings so this cyst is now fully separated now the next surgery which we will be done for the fibroid and that is the sub serous fibroid here ovary is fine but the problem of this serous fibroid it is sitting over the cordual end of the ovary so care should be taken that the cordial end of the tube so care should be taken that the tube should not be damaged during removal of this fibroid so we are injecting the vasopressin at the base of the fibroid here dilution is same that is 5 international unit of vasopressin is diluted with the 100 ml of the saline and then it will be injected over the base of the fibroid so that a transient ischemia will result and that will help you to dissect and during dissection there will not be any bleeding so this is the vasopressin which is slowly getting injected and you can see the change in the color and that change in the color is due to the transient ischemia which is created by the vasopressin this ischemia remain up to the 20 minutes of time minimum and by the time you can achieve the hemostasis nicely so this harmonic is dissecting keeping the level of dissection much towards the fibroid rather than the uterus because lateral end of this fibroid is just over the cornual end of the tube and that was giving some pressure effect over the tube so that the tube of that side was blocked so we have to preserve the tube and then we remove the fibroid and that's why the dissection is done at the serous layer just keeping away from the tube although the serosa of the tube may get little bit injured but mucosa layer will not be injured now this fibroid is also almost separated after removing this fibroid we have done again the tubal patency test to make it sure that this tube is patent and there is no any leak at the level of the cornual end so this is the last last bit and here the fibroid is out and now the tubal patency test with the hsg cannula the methylene blue dye is injected one grasper is keeping it up and just to see that it is no leak here and at the fimbrial end you can see the bubbles coming with the fluid here and that is the that means tube is patent without leak this is very good all the pressure over the tube has gone now this is the posterior fibroid here also vasopressin is injected so that transient ischemia will occur this is little towards the left side in this type of fibroid care should be taken 
that you should not give the transverse incision because in those situations bleeding chances are more. So this is a vasopressin which is injecting all around and it will give you a hydro dissection also which will make a good plane for the dissection of this type of fibroid. And now needle is removed and then with the harmonic again the it is stripped out just the outer capsule will open and this is a serous layer will cut Now this is the Mayama screw which is introduced from the right side contralateral port and then it will give the appropriate traction so that myomectomy can be easily performed. You can use one suction irrigation to give the proper enucleation so that a blunt dissection can be performed and that will not strip the muscles muscle fibers can be separated and a good plane can be achieved. Telescope is cleaned because few drop of this fluid has made the telescope dirty and again further dissection is carried out. This is one of the disadvantage of laparoscopy that your instruments are straight you don't have a finger if it is finger of the human is very good to do this type of enucleation in robotic surgery when we do myomectomy then in robotic you get this type of finger like dissection because instruments are articulating but anyway now this fibroid is also separated and now we will start suturing that is the extracorporeal square knot is applied to take a deep one or two bite to suture the defect which has been created during the enucleation of this fibroid. Generally we prefer the extracorporeal square knot because you can do the past pointing and one knot can reinforce the another. Intracorporeal sutures or barb sutures, bidirectional barb sutures, these are used by some of the people but generally we are not very happy with the tension which is exerted by these sutures. Extracorporeal knot has advantage the tip of knot pusher itself is acting as a good post pointing and that can make the knot very tight and it has a great ability to pull the tissue under tension. That is not possible in intracorporeal because your assistant finger is not sitting over the knot. And when you go for reverse C first will be loose. But this is the extracorporeal knot and here you can do the past pointing. And you can make it very tight and then after tying the one, when you take the another half knot, then it will slide the first more tighter and then it gets locked. So this is one of the big advantage of the extracorporeal knot and that's why we like to give it in the deep muscular layer. And this way this myoma is secured nicely and the layers were closed with two, three extracorporeal knot. Now after that, we have to remove all the or all the tissue which we have cut and in this situation this is we are using endo bag this is commercially available endo bag that is uh, size c actually and here you can open it in front of you and then first thing what we will remove is ovarian cyst this is unruptured ovarian dermoid which we can take it out easily and you have to roll upon into the endo bag so that it should not it should properly accommodate without rupturing. Both the edges of the endo bag is held and then it can be pulled together. So this is the first tissue which we will remove keeping into the endo bag that is the ovarian cyst. The mouth of the endo bag should come into the cannula and then cannula will be pulled together so that it can be exteriorized and then you can pull it either side and with the ovum forceps you can rupture the 
cyst. Sometimes trocar is also required through the endo bag to rupture the cyst and then you can suck with the suction. And now these are the myoma which will be morselated. Here we are using gynecare morselated from Ethicon that is sharp morselated and it can morselate those tissue very nicely. So all the myoma which has been removed is morselated. In those situations ports should must be closed because your ports are now 12 millimeter. To prevent the post-operative hernia after morselation of all the tissue port closure was performed. So this was a simple case of the ovarian cystectomy and myomectomy. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.